Okay, so hello and welcome back to another coin video. Today we're doing a medieval video and this is something that I just learned about yesterday and it's fairly interesting. It is the Rhenish Mint Association. So this is like a currency union between different uh, states in Germany. It's one of the earlier ones. It's probably not the earliest. There's a lot of others I could actually show you. So this is probably similar to the euro, where they tried, or well, they did, where they produced gold and silver coins of the same weight and standard and design for use in respective areas. So because they were standardized, they were all accepted in the different areas around the Rhine. So uh, this includes Tia, Cologne, Mains, so these were all uh, Roman Catholic prince uh, bishops, and then we had some ones that were secular, so they're not based on a religious motive. Although, though at the time, of Roman Catholic anyway, because uh, the Reformation hadn't swept through. Okay, okay, the coin shelf and the, so this is translation from germany so it's not as good as it could be yeah. using google uh, translator okay enshrine so the, there was a document called the golden bull and it was set to elect the whole uh, holy roman empire in 1356 and it gave these and three other places the right to coin silver and gold so here we have the actual a translation so the golden bull of emperor charles the fourth 1356 and he pretty much issued that as a reward to those who elected him so it's more like you do stuff for me i do stuff for you yay and uh yeah basically this is still going on so where we want to go down uh, so you could so you got different uh information concerning the prince electors in common so uh, it gives information about who are the prince electors i haven't read all of this maybe i won't it's a bit boring uh we need to go down to 10. so concerning money we Degree, moreover, that our successors, the king for the time being, being of Bohemia, okay, so the king of Bohemia is the Holy Roman Empire, shall have the same right at which our predecessors, the kings of Bohemia, of blessed money, are known to have had in all continuous, okay, we just go down to possession of which they remain. Right, namely, in every place part of the kingdom. So that means the people who are allowed to coin money, doesn't matter where it is, and the land subject to them and of all their dependencies. So pretty much everywhere they can just coin whatever they want. Wherever the king himself may have decree and shall phase, uh, shall please of coining gold and silver money, and I'll circulate it it in every way manner observed up to his time in the same kingdom of Bohemia in as such matters. So it's just saying that they could actually uh, coin silver and gold because before that they were only allowed to issue penny coins which are small. So in this way uh, beforehand they would have had to have gotten um, Coins, so here's a here's a, a gold coin of mains. So this is has a at the start you had John the Baptist, then they changed it. So it says uh, down here, okay, previous session at the feet John the Baptist was an eagle. So that was from uh, 1391 to 1419. Then they changed it to Saint Peter. And then in 1425, 
Let's change it to Jesus Christ. Okay. And it's 20 white pennies to one gold gilder. So they issued two coin, a white penny, vice fennec, and a gold gilder. So here's information on vice fennec. And they weighed, weighed about two grams. What is this? So this is the English version. And then we have the translated German version. And they were issued about 1385-86. So very good. And here we have a, a photo of one of them. So that's a Duke William Julich. And different places at different times actually issued these coins. So you can see that has the coat of arms in the center. And this is the standard design. So it's supposed to have three shields here. And here we have coat of arms in the middle. So that looks like probably the main's coat of arms. Um, or maybe the whole Roman Empire. And around the side, monitor. I think it's Jewish. So it's in Latin. So I'm not too sure what that actually says. Uh, this one doesn't give information. So we'll have a look at the coins in a minute. So that's the actual small uh, silver coin that they use for local use. So that was like a trade area. So when we look at the actual map of mains, so we've got tier here, we have mains, we have uh, Cologne up here. So this is the triangle where they wanted the coinage to circulate. So all this area. And then we had some down here, Suspaya, uh, I don't think Frankfurt was actually part of the Union. So it's really just around here where Bonnie is, Koblenz. Uh, and if we look at the current map, you can see that a lot of it is pretty much agriculture. So very extensive agriculture. They would have had some mines and all that around here. But I'm not too sure on the economic history. So they issued a silver coin. And here we have the actual gold coin. So this is the English version. This is the gold coin. And this has four coats of arms around it for the four other places that issued or part of the actual union as well. In the center, coat of arms would have been. Uh, so this is Maine, so this is whoever was issuing this specific gold coin. It says minted in Horst. Yes. And this one's about this information here. Uh, so 166 of a Cologne mark. And if you're not too sure what a Cologne mark is, you open that up. It says about 233.856 grams. So you need to get 66 coins out of that. And that gives you pretty much 3.43 gold. But then they reduced it later on to 167. But they reduced the purity from 23 and a quarter. So it's 24 carats is 100%. So this is probably 98% fine gold to about 19 so it's probably yeah. so gee i can't even math so what you need to do is you need to take 20 19 divided by 24 and it gives you uh 79 percent. so pretty much yeah about 80 percent gold and the rest is probably I'd say probably silver, a less valuable metal. But if they wanted to make it harder, they would have put copper in it. Just to harden it up, make it actually wear. But these are not supposed to be used by uh, most of the population, which couldn't afford these coins. Uh, they would have been just used in bulk lots, so transported. And use of purchasing high-valued products. 
Okay, so to significance due to the lack of gold, there was a shortage of Gouldens in the 15th, 16th. So these pretty much died out about then. And they were even minted with a gold content reduced by up to half. Yeah, so they died out when when they start diluting the gold content of that. Uh, these coins, even silver, they usually start to die. Okay, so the Reich wants Zuring or Imperial Minting Ordinance of the Holy Roman Empire from 1524 to 1559 described the uniform, okay, minting standard of the actual Gulen. So this was regulated throughout the Holy Roman Empire and they reduced it to 172, so 18 and a half carats, so it's less than 80%, with two and a half grams per coin of gold so they might have still weighed about uh yeah they would have still weighed about 3.4 but they put a lot of other products in the actual coin ah, okay so it was okay it developed into the most common long distance trade coin bohemia hungary Germany, Switzerland, Moravia. So Bohemia, Moravia, pretty much similar area. Part of the Czech Republic now. Netherlands, Spain, France. So it had a wide ranging circulation because it's just a popular coin. That's uh, because it was regulated and uh, at specific times they knew the gold content. There would have been probably a lot of counterfeits made. So uh, we'll look at that. And here we have the German article translated into English, and it has a lot more specific information, so that's pretty good. And there's that. And then we have the, so this is a coin that it developed from, it's the Florin that was first issued in uh, Florence, it's out of our Republic of Florence, and here's the actual coin. So this is pretty much copied by a lot of states. And here we have the gold florin, gold gulden. This one's a uh, struck in Holland under John of Bavaria. So this is probably uh, issued by the Palatines, who actually control, uh, were controlled by the Bavarians. So, and here's a Cologne mark. Don't worry about that. Prince electors. So Wikipedia gives you articles about. Uh, the Prince Electors and what they've done, it's probably easier than that medieval monument manuscript. So that's Numistar and have a look at how many of the German states coins uh, German states issue coins is quite a lot. I think there's like fourteen thousand. So I looked at the coins of Bohemia and I didn't see that they actually issued any of these. So we need to look at, you know, 1370. So they issued the Groschen. And here we have the Hala, the Numus Fenig. Uh, if we go, you see, 1370, go in the 1400s, and they didn't issue any of this white Groschen. And then we go to the gold coins, and all ducats. So they didn't issue any of those specific coins for the Bohemia. Then we are in, okay, this is Palatine. So if we, so you can see they issued colors when this coin was no longer in circulation. And here we go, 14. Uh -huh. So here we have a white Groschen of Frederick I. Then earlier we have good Groschens. They weren't standardized and they were only pretty much just local. But then 1375, we have the one with John the Baptist. Obviously, earlier they issued John the Baptist, so that's why they actually uh, issued that coin. And there's 
initially they just had the single coat of arms and then in 1386 they issued it with the design that they all agreed on but then they still continued to issue ones just with their own coat of arms so let's have a look at that coin obviously this one's yeah it's been struck a few times i reckon it's got too much going in the field so also the engraving probably had trouble and here's the coat of arms or fails and the coat of arms of the actual ever states that actually issued the coin and this one's yeah they're roughly about two grams and they should be just pure silver and the gul groschen for about three and a half grams something like that and here we have the interpretation so rupert mob yeah so it doesn't have translation in english and i don't actually speak roman latin roman so it's, it's the same coin so here's another one from falkenstein so this is from tier so we have uh, St. Peter sitting down. Obviously, we have cathedrals in the background. Let's see the monogram. So he says Verna Archbishop here. Monat. And here we have the coat of arms in the center of the state that actually issued it. And the ones around it. And this one's close to two grams. So, what would you be paying for one of those? I'd say quite a few hundred dollars. And the silver coins. But for the gold coins, I would say you'll be paying uh, probably at least five to ten grand. Because if we look for a gold gulden, <clears throat> I can, you can see this, I'm struggling to actually get Okay, a bid. So <clears throat> three thousand euros. So that's about five thousand dollars. That's not the one we're looking for. In my shops. No, that's definitely not what we're looking for. Okay, let's see this one. So they do get a bit expensive. That one doesn't have a price on it. The gold, these gold coins are actually quite expensive. Here we go. Maybe one of these, say. So. That's sort of later issue, but the same coat of arms occurring on it. How much is that? It doesn't give an actual. And price no, doesn't give natural price, but you know when you can actually find one, maybe we need to put a place maybe here. Okay, so coin archives. Maybe look at that. So you look at no, the photos are even worse. Okay. Maybe Cologne. Okay, you got Numistar. eBay. No, I want an actual stack bowers. Let's see what happens there. Okay, here we have some from Coin Archives. So this is a good place to have a look if you want to look up your coins. But we're not. They're all, most of them in euros, some in US dollars, some in Polish Lotti. It's not really specific. Maybe get rid of the Hungarian king. Let's 
Okay, so upcoming options. Okay, anyway, there you go. 2000, but it's in pretty poor condition. So this is a good one. Estimate 800, 1200. So this is in yeah, probably EF condition. I don't see much wear, but it's just the actual strike. Uh, what does the grading MS six mm, MS MS will be mint state Stacks Bells Gallery NGC? So obviously I don't grade them. So they grade these different than modern coins. So I think that's pretty low value for. A coin like that. Anyway, if we have a look at some other coins, so here's one from Mainz. If we go back to the earlier period, so they did issue the single shield, and here's the actual coat of arms. And there's that time period in which they were issued up to, so 1449. Obviously, the number of shields varied depending who was in this union. So, and it looks like the last one, yeah, about 1500s was when they pretty much started to phase them out. And then they issued other coins, so here we have the The actual time. I want to list, I want the gold coins. So, they should the Tala, Ducat, so pretty much 1500s, they just stopped issuing them. So, that's a very interesting historical narrative of uh, a earlier currency. So I hope this helps you with your coin collecting and have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. I think I'll leave it here. I need to read up a bit more on it. Maybe some other currency unions as well. Although, yeah, here we have gold gulden. So obviously they did issue them to about 1600, so 100 years later than what I thought. Although this would have been a lot less gold than about two and a half grams. Then they should do cut. So they actually had to change the actual currency. Increase the purity to 98%. And but kept increase the weight to three and a half grams. Okay, let me know what you think about these coins. I think they're actually quite interesting. Thank you and goodbye.